Felton's Hellas Pulikin. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. Yet another one from Germany. And it is the Felton's Helles Pulikin, which was brought over from Germany from a mate, by a mate of mine. And he lives in the sort of region where Felton's is based. It's the North Rhine-Westphalia region, which is northwest Germany. Now, Felton's are a fantastic brewery. I really like them. I've tried their Gravensteiner, which is, they call it a land beer, I call it a Keller beer, whatever it is, it's really good. And the Felton's Pilsner as well, that's really nice. So I'm hoping this one doesn't let the side down. Now it's quite interesting what they say about this beer. It's got quite a weird label, All right? It's got three, what they look like, court jesters. Well, there's a court jester in a barrel and there's a, couple, there's a fella there with a beer in his hand and there's another fella who looks like he's out of his nut on acid or something. But <laughs> the website makes a big thing about saying, oh yeah, if you drink this, it will bring a very nice environment, a happy environment and all that. And I thought, fucking hell, if they started selling this in the pubs over there, there would not be, over here, there would not be a very fucking happy environment, believe me, because this is very Moorish. And the more you drink, the more you get drunk. And the more you drink, get drunk, the more fucking trouble you start. Well, you don't really. It's just a couple of numb scalder, scalder herbs that live around here. But yeah, this uh, this area that I'm living in, it's getting getting quite naughty actually on a, on a Saturday night. And I read the local paper online. I'm not old fashioned. I haven't got my fucking paper in the morning and tutting at it. But I read the Kent Messenger, and the town centre nearest to me. It's getting fucking violent. There was a geezer stabbed there last Saturday. I just think, it was never like this when I first moved down here. I moved from London and this place was like an oasis. And it's not too far from Maystone, if you're wondering, actually. And yeah, it's just, I wouldn't say it's gone downhill, but there's some nasty elements that get into the town centre. It's fucking weird, I sound like my dad now. <laughs> nasty elements. That was me when I was growing up. Anyway, let's move along swiftly. Let's get back to the beer. Pulikin. Don't know what that means. Tried looking it up, can't work it out. If anybody knows, any German viewers or subscribers there know what it means, please let me know. But this is a Hellas. Now, it's interesting what they say about this Hellas because their view on it is that it's a cross between a North German Pilsner, which is very bitter from the hops, and a Bavarian Hellas, which is nice and sweet and malty. So that's interesting. I'll be Taking a great interest in that. That does actually sound like the Pilsner that they do. I had that on draft when I went up to York and it was lovely. I mean, I've had a few cans of it down here, but if you get it on draft, it is fucking handsome, believe me. So if you do see the Felton's Pilsner, that's really nice. But the jewel in their crown is the Gravensteiner, the land beer. That is superb. That For me, that got a 10 out of 10. And I do question whether it's as good as the Hackershaw Keller beer, the St. Jorgen Boy Heller beer, and obviously this one, the, the Gravensteiner. But this one, it's in a 330ml bottle. I don't know why, but all the other beers are in a, a 500ml. Weird. But what I do like about Felton's is they they know what they're doing and they use good quality ingredients as well. And they do make a point about using not, hop, not using hop extract. It's all fresh, loose leaf hops, which is, you can tell by the flavour of, certainly by the Gravensteiner, it was really, really nice. So, without further ado, let's get it investigated. Right, as I just said, it's a 330ml bottle, it's 5.2%. It is, well, they've called it a Hellas, but they do say that there's some 
elements of a Pilsner, a North German Pilsner on this, which I like because that is the region. The North German Pilsners do have a reputation for being quite bitter. They're very similar, I won't say they're very similar, but they're as bitter as some of the, the Czech Pilsners, which, are, which can be quite bitter with that, them Sartz hops in there. But this is, uh, this is a cross between the two. It's, it's supposedly got some Bavarian sweetness going on there as well. Interesting. There's the, there's the label, as I just showed you. Three knobbers. Look like they're out there nut. That is the sort of caper you get up to when you've had a few. Let's get it open and let's see what's going on. Right. There's the cap if you want to have a look. Right, let's get it into ye oldy glass. I'm using this glass today. This is a sort of a, I don't know, a Vit beer glass. But I made the mistake of pouring a 330ml bottle of German beer into a 330ml glass and I couldn't get it all in there. So this is just over 330ml and it should fit in there nicely. There it is. Looks very nice indeed. Very small bubbles on there. I'm looking at the head, all the bubbles are very uniform on there which looks really good. That's always a good sign of a beer. If a brewer knows what they're doing then the, the bubbles will all be uniform like that. On the nose. Wow. Lovely. Lemon citrus. Big lemon citrus. Earthy, multi earthy notes that remind me of the almost roasted malt that you get in certain German light coloured beers. The one that springs to mind, well, there's two the St. Georgen Boy Hellas, but also Varsteiner. I've noticed it, it doesn't taste as nice in the Varsteiner. There's a little bit of a, I don't know, there's a little bit of a bitter note going onto it, but in the St. Georgen Boy, you do get the very nice, almost toasted flavoured malt in there which makes it really moorish and I've tasted it in a few other beers as well but that's the aroma that I'm getting from this it's quite nice oh that's that is very nice indeed is that roasted malt it's almost if you can imagine a digestive biscuit that you put in the under the grill or something that's what it would smell like so there's a sweetness to it but there's also a slight bitterness. Oh, it smells lovely. Subtle, but really nice. And there's some of the hop notes that are in there as well. Some noble hop. Herbal. Herbaceous, as they call it. Herbaceous notes. Mmm, very nice indeed. Let's get it down the hatch. Porst. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, ho, 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 this is lovely. Oh, that is perfect. And the finish on it. That is superb. Oh, I'm loving this. And they got that description spot on. There is elements of bitterness on this, subtle, but it's there. But the malt on this is very big, very sweet, almost liquid bread type on the palate and on the finish. The finish is huge. There's a little lace of lemon citrus on it, but it tastes absolutely fucking amazing. Oh, this is good. Oh, bloody hell. This, for me, is the best North German beer, or North German Hellas, that I've tried so far. This tastes amazing, I have to say. The dominant flavour on this is the, as I say, it's a, it's a bready, toasted type flavour with elements of honey sweetness on it 
and then a very very subtle bitterness from the hops a couple of herbal notes and a lemon citrus seam running through it and i'll tell you what this is blowing me away this is absolutely superb oh it's, it's lovely lovely light mouthfeel carbonation is there and it just tastes superb I'm loving it that is great and that is another one another good one from Felton's I'm not exaggerating when I say I, I really think they are one of the best German brewers in the northern part of Germany I don't I can't think of a better one I know they're a small brewer they're not as big as um, some of the other bigger breweries from around there like Bitburger Warsteiner etc well Warsteiner are now owned by Carls, well not owned but I think they are actually they're owned by Carlsberg oh but this is this is superb oh it's absolutely great and I'm putting it down now because I don't want to finish it all I want to savour everything out of this so what is the verdict on the Felton's Hellas Pulikin. That is fantastic. I've never seen this beer before. As I say, it was brought over by a mate from Germany. But if you can find this, and they're doing it in a 330ml bottle, this should have been in a 500ml bottle. Why did they do that? That's the only downside, is there just isn't enough of it. But it's superb. I heartily recommend this. You have to find this. If you can see it online, get some. And if they, I don't think they do it in a 500ml bottle, I think they only do it in a 330ml. But if you can find it, get it. It's, it's just superb. It's really nice. It puts me in mind of the St. Georgen Boy Hellas. Not, I don't think it, well, it, it comes a little bit close, but it's got them elements of that big, toasted, bready malt, if you can imagine that. Like white toast, if you can, white bread toasted. It's like that, but it's big and it leaves a huge finish. But there's other nice notes on top of that. You've got the, the, the noble hop notes, the herbaceous notes on top of that. But also there's a seam of lemon citrus running through and it is just superb. The mouthfeel is superb. I'm gonna take another swig out of this. Ah, it, it's amazing. That is fantastic really really impressed with that and that is in the same league as the Gravensteiner it's got that lovely Moorish malt on it that you just can't get enough of and even the Pilsner Felton's Pilsner as well as I say I don't think I've had a bad one in this lot and I'm going to give this a 10 out of 10 because this is this is my style of beer when it comes to lagers and light colour beers this is what I like and that is fucking amazing. 10 out of 10, definitely recommended. And remember, beer is working class champagne.